Welcome back to episode 103 of the Guardian Project podcast. I'm your host, Andy, and like high fructose corn syrup consumption, magic spells are also good when cast in moderation. Ah, there you go. There you go. You know, maybe someone limits you to one spell per turn or something. They're just trying to help you out. Maybe they just play the new spell moderation oh well there's that yeah i guess i didn't i didn't get that literal (laughs) sorry about that (laughs) and i'm your other host mike coyle and um in case you didn't know twilight profit from rivals of ixalan is now over 30 dollars for a copy of that card it's a mythic uh vampire but you know i better sell mine before sunset not because it's a vampire because but because i'm looking to make my own twilight profit That was good. That was good. Please listen carefully. Before what what time is twilight? Is that just like when the sun has gone down below the horizon? Yeah, and it's still that's twilight. What's twilight? Yeah, twilight. The sun is below the horizon, but it's still bright. Like the sunlight is still illuminating the air. The, the 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 sky illuminating the air the sky the, the sky. air i don't know <laughs> the clouds <laughs> yes and this is the podcast where we talk about all things magic the gathering but mostly commander well happy pride month everyone uh we are recording in june now um kicking off their fourth straight year wizards is celebrating pride uh you can find uh, pride for both magic and dungeons and dragons on their mtg pro shop so they are supporting the lambert house uh which is an lgbtq plus youth center um <clears throat> that is uh addressing mental and physical health disparities faced by lgbtq adolescents um so there's actually a lot of stuff that you can pick up i actually i, I picked up a pride shirt last year they've got new designs this year really cool stuff so you can get um t-shirts messenger bags long sleeve shirts tank tops mouse pads i guess i use i always think about it i'm like mouse pads but i'm using one as we record there you go so i guess i use a mouse pad every day all day um there's hoodie zip ups there's pins um and pullover hoodies so check it out if you are looking for some uh pride apparel um that is out now yeah, uh, the Modern Horizons 2 pre-release event is actually going to be, there's going to be an event taking place on Spell Table. So for three days from June 11th to June 13th, you're going to be able to participate in uh, a pre-release Modern Horizons 2 event via webcam using the Spell Table tool. So Friday, June 11th uh, through Sunday, June 13th, uh, 3 p.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific Time Friday, 6 a.m. to 9 p.m. Pacific Time Saturday, 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. Pacific Time Sunday. Uh, if you're not in an area that is doing pre-releases uh, in store or if you don't feel comfortable at, at this point, maybe you're unvaccinated, uh, you don't feel comfortable going out, you will have an option to do this uh, digital pre-release, which is really cool. Um, but again, if you... If you do have the options to go out and do a pre-release in the store, please be safe to do so. Um, this online pre-release actually has a little bit of an extra twist to it. So there's going to be a lot of um, content creators and, and uh, uh, specialty people performing or, or competing uh, as part of different teams. Um, we have Team Chatterfang, Team Dakin, and Team Garth. So if you want to hop online during that event and cheer on your favorite content creators uh, and your team, your favorite team that your content creators on, uh, that'll be a lot of fun to watch. Uh, there's a lot of resources that Wizards of the Coast actually has in case you don't already have a camera set up uh, for your um, playing at home. So please use those resources and we hope to see you online. Yeah, and we'll post the link. We'll post the link to this in the chat, um, or I'm sorry, in the chat below. We're not streaming. <laughs> we're recording, so we'll post it in the show notes below um, to check that out. We also have more Year of the Ox uh, promos. So, uh, given the variety of formats um, and dates reaching all the way through the the Lunar New Year, players in the Asia uh, Pacific region can battle in events to um, earn some more promos which means that I need to make sure that I get more promos because these are so cool. <laughs> uh, earlier, we got uh, Sethron, uh, the Sethron Herloon General, which I've done a deck tech on. So you've, you've probably seen some of my commander um, content and, and parts of that deck uh, floating around. But it looks like we're going to be seeing some more um, 
So Mirag, Fury of Akum, Ox of Agonis, Angrath, the Flame Chained, and Tangarth, First Mate. Um, it looks like we are going to see some promos for those through various events in the next year. So look out for those. I am very, very excited. Yeah, they look really cool. Um, I know maybe maybe not. There's some of them are, are just the uh, different Chinese um, wording on the yeah. cards, but but the new art for for you know Angrath is uh, pretty cool. Angrath, and it looks like Tangarth too. Yeah, so, and I, I run them both. That's very cool, and and I know Tangarth is. Uh, I've seen a, another player play a deck with that. It's a very strong deck, under underrated in my opinion. Um, yes, <laughs> we want to uh, also give one big special thank you to our new patron William T. Thank you so much uh, for joining our patronage family. Your portion of the project is due next week. Um, uh, cite your sources. <laughs> you have to. You, you can't not cite your sources. That's the one requirement in writing a project, in doing a project. Right. So you don't actually have to write the project, but you better cite your sources. You cite the sources and you give me what you wrote and I'll, I can cite them appropriately, I guess. That's fine. Send me, the, send me the link and I'll make sure I check <laughs> Purdue Owl because I check it every time I have to cite a source. Best tool for writers. It just does it for you. <laughs> it's pretty fantastic. Exactly. And if you want to support us, you can head to patreon.com slash guardian project pod and donate for any dollar amount. You can get some cool promos or even join us on the show. If you're looking for another way to support the podcast, whatever you're listening to the podcast on now, if you could follow, like, subscribe. Uh, if you are watching on YouTube, you can hit that bell icon to get uh, notifications when we release ding, new ding. content. Um, so please do that. And uh, we also want to interact with you in the comment section. So please leave comments. Tell us what you like, what you don't like uh, on our gameplay videos. Tell us the mistakes that we made. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll no, interact no, with you and tell you that so we're so many. There's so many. We'll, that I do I, wrong. I'm, you'll, you'll get the, you'll get the interaction with our account that says, Oops. Yep. That was, that was us. <laughs> like that time that I cast blasphemous act off of a Rishkar's expertise. Yes. You can't do that. No, it is. It is a 10 uh, mana value card. Is it 10 or is it nine? I it's, can't remember either way. It's higher than the six or the five you're allowed. I think it's is, five, right? Uh, I think it's six actually with Rishkar's. Is it six? Well, it's higher than that and you can't do it. Yeah. No, not <laughs> so, quite. Coil, what are we talking about today? So, we have had uh, the privilege of actually being able to get together and play some uh, paper magic in person for the first time this year. And we want to talk about our transition from webcam magic to paper magic and um, how it's been so far for us over the past, I don't know, it's been a, a week maybe. How it's it, been over, over the past, the past week. whole week. Yeah, I mean it's it's pretty crazy though. It, there's been a lot. <laughs> yeah, I'm very excited. All right, well, I think it's time to get to it. Well, this was the first time that I got to pull out the all Ravnica cube in about. Uh, in over a year and a half, it's been over a year and a half since I played that cube. Um, although I did buy lots of new foils for it. Um, and every time we play the cube, uh, Azorius gets nerfed a little bit more. Because turns out, I made it too good. Yeah, maybe just remove Azorius from the entire cube. Just just run it with nine guilds instead. See what happens. I can't. No. <laughs> you know, so so what I did, so I changed the cube. So it used to be a 540. Now it's a 360. So um, if you're not familiar with cube, it's like a cultivated environment where you play with your favorite cards or specific, you know, uh, mechanics. Or maybe you build a cube that's themed around a specific plane like I did. I know there's um, discussions all the time online um, about Innistrad cubes but i wanted a ravnica cube so i actually actually changed it up a bit <clears throat> i changed it from being 540 to 360 so there's 360 cards so if you draft with eight people you'll draft every single card um, and i did cut a lot of the guild cards so at one point i had 15 of each two color cards specifically um whether it was hybrid or it was it required actual two different colors of mana um, for those guilds um that's in there, but I cut that down to, I think it's now nine of each because there were a lot of people that were drawing cards that, or, or getting past packs where they couldn't actually draft anything. They're like, there's eight cards here and not one of them's in a color I can play. Mm -hmm. So we changed it up, had a really good time. And this was, 
Um, I think my second time drafting Boros Aggro, and I did go two and one. So I won two of my matches. I lost one of them. And when I won, I won both games. It was like really fast out the gate or I got destroyed by uh, blue white control. I feel like you just described a modern burn players day two. Like they're either two owing or getting locked out by control. Uh, but what guild ended up winning? Yeah, yeah. So I had <laughs> um, uh, Simic ended up winning. Okay. Um, overall, and then Azorius was in second because the Simic player ended up beating the Azorius player, which was which was the you know threw it right over the edge. But um, towards the end, no one hate drafted any of the good Simic cards. Not that hate drafting is a good strategy, but when you pull a card you just specifically don't want to play against. Um, but we did only have six people drafting, so we didn't have a full eight for the cube specifically. So there were plenty of cards that didn't get drafted. It just turns out all the good ones from Simic and Azorius were there. Yep. Shark, um, shark to crab. OP. But, uh, shark to crab was in there and shark to crab was getting counters from, uh, I forget there was one game and there was, there was a judge question asked and it was like, if this happens and shark to crab gets two counters this way, does it still count? And I was like, yep. Shark Crab still taps your stuff down and doesn't untap that, and they don't untap the next upkeep. Mm -hmm. like, okay, I guess I'm not gonna do so well there. So <laughs> I drafted, uh, I drafted Boros. We, I saw there was a Golgari deck that was drafted. Uh, there was a Rakdos Aggro, and I don't know if it was Rakdos Aggro or Rakdos Control, but it was had all the removal, and it, and they were very proud to say that every time that they played against the Azorius deck, they removed um three fairy uh the teferi that only costs three mana uh okay. they removed it each time and that was a win just removing that teferi and i think that teferi just needs to come out of the cube seeing as it's like banned in every format it might just be a little too good for that cube yeah it's pretty strong it's probably was the second strongest teferi no third strongest teferi probably third next to, oh, are you counting the mono blue from mon commander yeah mono blue chain veil to fairy and then dominaria six drop to fairy are probably one and two and then the three fairy three fairies crazy 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 yeah crazy. yeah so i think everyone had a really good time that 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 cube's always really fun to draft so i am i'm looking to change it up a little bit more um and and get more foils so if you're listening and you want to get out of some ravnica foils or if someone has that hydroid crisis in foil that you want to get rid of you hit me up on twitter at at flory <laughs> and uh let me know where and when because i need that foil hydroid crisis for the cube because that is one that i think i want to to leave in there I do want to leave that one in there. It's yeah. really fun. No, it's iconic too. It's great. It's a great card. Best, best crisis. It's such a good card. <laughs> um, <laughs> did you say best crisis? Best crisis. A hard, that's a, that's a, put it on the board. It's a best crisis there is. The, the Guardian Project's favorite crisis? Hydroid crisis. We also got to, uh, that same day, draft Commander Legends in person for the first time, courtesy of you. This is the greatest moment of my Commander Legends career, um, is drafting this for the first time ever. So yeah, we yeah, had, we have been waiting since November. Yeah, so we had a we had a, a group of eight people, uh, completely vaccinated, get together and draft this. Uh, I think two other people said that they had drafted it before, but not I too many so. times. Um, so you know they had a little bit of experience, but I had opened a lot of boxes of Commander Legends, so I knew what to expect at least from pack to pack. Um, didn't expect what I got in my second pack, but. Uh, actually, Andy, I want to start with you. And what did you draft in this uh, draft? Okay, so my my first two picks, because so this is obviously this was all new to us, and drafting is always really difficult when you first do it. So my first pack was actually did have um, two commanders in it, and it was uh, Galanra, Caller of Wirewood. And then the other creature, it's the uh, the mono white creature that has the activated ability. Uh, L Livio, o Oathsworn Sentinel oh. Oh, was, yeah. was my. What, those were so those were in my in my pack. Now um, they don't necessarily go together, right? Galanra cares about cards that are uh, six CMC or greater to draw a card, and then Livio, you can exile creatures and then bring them all back by tapping it and removing it, it's just it's a, it's a lot happening and i go i don't know i don't draft um 
I don't I don't draft green white very often, so uh, I'll try this out. So yes, you can uh, choose another target creature. Its controller may exile it with an Aegis counter, and you can pay three and return all uh, exiled cards with Aegis counters on them to the battlefield under their owner's control. I didn't know if it was going to be a good deck, um, but I kind of just started going in green white. Um, little did I know, three people were trying to grab green white. One of them sitting next to me, uh -huh. so I did not have the best picks in all the green white cards in my opinion um but i still had a ton of fun oh. what did you draft so what did you start with because you pivoted you changed i pivoted yeah i pivoted on pack two so in pack one i was taking just every single green creature i could find and it ended up, ended up being like a combination of both elves and plus one plus one counter synergy so i was kind of positioning myself where i could go into the green black elf strategy or the green white plus one plus one counter strategy but as you just pointed out at least two other people in in the thing doing the plus one plus one counter and there was one other person doing elves and i think i was only taking the green ones and he was taking all the black elves so that it, they never really came back around for me to build that but luckily the uh, second pack I opened, I ended up taking my first legendary creatures. I hadn't taken any <laughs> legendary creatures in the first round um, because my two legendary creatures in my pack were Kodama of the East Tree and Sakashima of a Thousand Faces, uh, <laughs> oh my which, gosh. which is a, a, a technically a CEDH commander pairing. Um, yes, it is. Because when you resolve Sakashima uh, with Kodama out... It enters as a copy of Kodama, and then they go back and forth with their triggers, and you can just empty your hand of permanence. Uh, so after that, I started drafting nothing but permanence. I had like maybe two or three pieces of interaction in the deck. My my whole goal was to just puke my hand onto the deck and try to win. Uh, unfortunately, there was a mono red uh, aggressive deck that was getting everyone's life totals down using uh, Rogue Rock and Kettis. So uh, I wasn't really able to get, I, I was able to puke my hand out once, but at the time I was at five life and I ended up dying to three rocks from Togo. <laughs> See, that's what it's all about. You're like, well, I, I did all the things and then I had three rocks thrown at me to end, to end me. Oh yeah. It was a lot of fun. It was like, I had, I had, um, inexorbable ooze or maybe not inexorbable. There's an ooze in commander legends that at your upkeep, if you control your commander, you get to make a copy of it. And I didn't realize how good how good a synergy that is with Sakashima because I just had Sakashima come in as a copy of the ooze and I was making two oozes per upkeep. Some of these interactions, it's like I thought these cards from Commander Legends were trash and that they had no use whatsoever. They were just fodder for draft or whatever. And now I'm seeing some of the synergies behind it with, with these legendary creatures. And it's really cool. Yeah, the um the the so I was at the pod that had the green black elves. So there was a, a Numa Jiraga chieftain and uh the black elf that I am it's escaping me Mi right now. M Miari or Nadir? It, Nadir sounds more like what I I played against. Mi um, Miara's a two drop, Nadir's a six drop. I'm actually trying to find them like while we're speaking. I think okay. I think it was me Nope. It was it was Nadir. I don't believe it was Miara. Looking at Miara, that one has when it or another elf dies, you can pay a life and draw uh pay pay one and a life if you do draw a card. I don't think it was that. Mm -hmm. I think it was Nadir. Yeah. Um but either way, Green Black Elves was really great because they had I think it was I is the card I Blight Massacre that yes. gives non elves minus two minus two? Is yes. that what it is? Minus one minus one? Minus two minus I don't two. Know. Yep. They, yeah, so I Blight Massacre for two black black sorcery non elf creatures get minus two minus two till end of turn. Yeah. There were three of them in their deck. Mm -hmm. Um mm -hmm. they, because no one else took those. <laughs> and that, and uh, that is really yeah. interesting. I like I like the draft environment where you can actually have multiple copies of the same card because I remember I, I had two copies of Essior, the uh, the owl that gives your commanders uh, basically ward before ward was a thing um, counter target spell or ability unless the opponent pays two that target a commander you control so it was cool to have two pieces of protection for my commanders uh, in the exact same card one of them just happened to be etched foil which was also really cool so there was that which one was etched 
Um, say it was two copies of Essior, so one one copy oh, was Edge. Oh, well, I'm sorry. One I thought wasn't. you said one of your commanders. Oh, I wish. Was oh, I wish. I wish. I, if Sakashima was etched, I mean, that would be really nice. We did we did open a mana drain uh, that ended up not making it into a deck because the mono red yeah, player the, drafted the, the it. The mono red player hate hate drafted. The, yeah, the mana drain. and I didn't even know the mana drain <laughs> got pulled until like 20 minutes after we were done with the games. And it's like, why didn't you just tell me? I want to know if we opened a mana drain. That's awesome. That's funny. So I ended up, I did end up having a good chunk of rares and mythics. So um, I did not go with a green white uh, counter strategy, even though that's really what the set wants. But I did get a couple of cool cards. I didn't see a lot of them. I'll be honest. Um, I did. I drafted the Seraphic Greatsword, which is the equipment that gives your creature plus two plus two. And when whenever that creature is equipped and, and attacks the player with the highest life or tied for the highest, you make a four four flying angel tap and attacking. That seems really cool for uh, a limited environment. Um, I didn't draw it, but I did get a Rings of Bright Hearth because Livio has activated abilities, so you can um, copy them. Although it's an activated ability that really only costs two anyway to, to choose to exile something, so you're paying four anyway. Um, but I ran it because then I can say I ran a, a Rings of Bright Hearth in, <laughs> in a limited deck. Um, but I think the card that did the most for me um, and it's probably really good in this format was Kamal's Will. So Kamal's Will says choose one. If you control your commander, you can choose both uh, until end of turn. Um, another target creature um, you control becomes uh, an elemental creature. Or I'm sorry, what? Is it each? No, it's any number of target lands you control. Each become 1-1 one, one elemental creatures with Vigilance, Indestructible, and Haste. And there's still lands. And then choose target creature you don't control. Each creature you control deals damage equal to its power to that creature. So I was like, well, this isn't that great. And then I realized, oh, all of my lands just become one ones. And then they, for, for at least each land, you, you can deal that much damage to your opponent's creature. Yeah. But I did have one of my commanders and I did get to play Kamal's Will and I did get to deal like 12 damage to something. <laughs> and that was cool for four mana. That's awesome. I know um, I kind of had a little bit of the opposite effect. I ended up drafting a Reshape the Earth, which is the nine mana mythic green that says you can search your library for up to 10 lands and put them on the battlefield tapped. Because once I was sorting out my cards, I was going, I have 24 lands in my deck. Why do I need, when I'm on nine, do I need to go search for 10 more lands in here? So some of these um, mythics and stuff that we would play in our 100 card commander deck are actually, uh, in my opinion, pretty bad in the draft environment. Um, and so that kind of leads me to to the commander cube that I want to put together is I don't want the cube to have any of those cards like that that are just dead cards. Uh, but I understand you know, Wizards of the Coast had to print these cards like this in order to support the commander format. I mean, the set was for us. It wasn't just for draft. Um, so I'm still happy that we got those cards. But uh, definitely, I kind of wish that those cards, you know, a mythic that gets passed around the table and no one wants to take just seems very uh, wasted, I guess, as a draft slot. I didn't get an option. It never passed by me. Would so, you would you have taken it? Do you think I was in green white? Oh, hundred percent! I would have taken that card. Okay. <laughs> Although I was, I I I got mana screwed in the one game, so yeah. I probably never would have cast it. But if I had, you know, you cross that off the list. However, I will say that based on that my draft experience, the way that I did draft, I would do it differently next time. I think I went with the commander too early and was like oh all right i'm gonna force this strategy as opposed to just taking the best cards and hoping i would get a commander later which i think might be part of the strategy right because this is the format where you can get prismatic piper no matter what mm -hmm. um so it, it like even if you didn't draft it this is the set that says prismatic piper is always available um i i think that's where i went wrong because i i did not just take the best cards but i was passed late in in packs uh two and three uh your lock of of scourged thrash is that what it is scourged scorched trash scorched, no, scor scorched thrash trash yes i there was a your lock that was passed to me um i had three three color commanders that were passed to me but i had not taken like good cards in in some of those colors so i think next time when we do this I'm going to try and draft the best cards first and hope to find a commander 
after. Yeah. No, I totally, I totally agree with you. Um, cause that's how it felt like in, in our pod too. It's like if someone didn't completely build around one of the strategies that was pre-built into the draft environment because they got the perfect commanders for them, then the best decks were the ones that were just playing value cards. Like mm-hmm. my deck just being green, blue, I want to cheat every permanent onto the battlefield. There was no theme going on there. It's just I want free permits on the battlefield. And I think that's what you have to do with any of the three color commanders that are here because the three color commanders don't seem to actually match any of the themes in there. So you're playing three color, best cards I got in these colors. Yeah, so I I, <clears throat> I ended up having Gen Arcanum Weaver... I had Kulthanor, The Last You, and Your Lock of Scorch Thrash. But I also just randomly around the table because I, I it ended up just in my hands. Um, I had the Zara Renegade Recruiter, the the Red Blue Pirate. Um, I had Hamza Guardian of Arishin. Um, all of those things I could have done a lot with if I had not pigeonholed myself to just grabbing only for the most part green and white cards and not necessarily looking at what they were doing. Not that I would say I wasn't looking at what they were doing, but I was grabbing cards like Captain's Call, which makes three one one white soldier creature tokens for four. Mm-hmm. And not that I'm going to say it's a a bad card, but I certainly could have. I know there were much better things that I probably should have just grabbed and hoped for the best for 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 later. Because if I had just grabbed good Jund cards and then just jammed your lock, I probably would have done much better. Yeah, I mean, even just a little bit of burn that you could do at everyone's turn is fantastic. So I I agree. And this was our first time drafting it, though. We learned we can we got yes. we got twenty two more drafts to go until we're. Yeah, so experts. Coyle said he's he's got enough that we can do twenty two <laughs> more of these. Oh my god! Well, and 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 it, it seems like I don't have confirmation. It seems like Commander Legends draft boosters got a reprint. Uh, at okay. least at least the prices went down like ten or fifteen dollars, and there's at least rumors that LGS are supposed to get them back. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to pick them up for like $110, $115. Not too much more than what they were when they first got released. Um, I don't think there's going to be Commander Legends collectors boosted reprinted, but there's no confirmation one way or the other on that. So it could happen. Exactly. Uh, any other notes on Commander Legends draft? Um, I th- So I really like Partners. Um, for the I draft, them. I it, don't like tracking my games against them because no. I have to write so many words. <laughs> it, uh, it, it. I, I kind of wish that the the draft environment was built more around three colors, but I understand the difficulty of do, of everyone doing three colors uh, in a draft. Um, but I want to draft this maybe two or three more times before I start really developing my cube and i think i do want to try to focus on three color commanders um similar to the three color commanders in commander legends but uh, maybe some other ones like zur the enchanter and do an esper enchantments theme for a draft uh or something like that I, i'm i'm excited to build my own themes um but wondering now whether or not themes are going to be followed or if people are just going to draft the best cards uh once they actually get comfortable with the draft environment if it was anything like the cube that i had built um we we found at least for a little while that people were just drafting the best cards and were able to use gates to 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 just manage to be okay in splashing that third color so Mm. i don't think you'll have an issue getting people to draft three colors um but i will say that every time we, we we cube i change it up quite a bit um at least I would say I, I make at least 10 different card changes, right. which does not seem like that much, but um, I think it's enough to know this card is terrible. No one wants to draft it. Just remove it. No one wants this at all in here. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm excited to see that, um, that cube come up soon, but let's shift gears now to talk a little bit more about our, our transition to playing paper magic. So um Obviously, with things starting to open up slowly here, we are being able to see our friends, um, or we've been able to see our friends uh, finally. And uh, it's going to change a few of our decks because we stopped playing some cards or never really started playing cards um, that had come out during the pandemic because they're just too difficult to play online. Um, if you don't have some sort of a dry erase token like Infinite Tokens, or 
if you have our podcast tokens. Yes, which you can get if you become a patron of our podcast. You yes. can get a playset of those tokens. And we're currently actually uh, looking to get uh, a new design. Well, not design, a new style of token, a new material for the tokens. So uh, be on the lookout for that as well. Yeah, so if you already have a place out of our tokens, when we get the new ones ordered, we'll send those to you. We're looking for a full uh, dry erase finish. Um, <laughs> and uh, right now we suggest leaving them, but then these can those those other ones can become, uh, become permanent tokens and we'll send you some new ones. But if you want the new ones, sign up. Boom, sign um, up. <clears throat> so we're going to talk about some cards here that we're excited to either put back into our decks because we had taken them out, it's just too difficult, or cards that we're excited to try out, like Breaches, brazen plunderer which you know we talked about many many months ago briefly um but i never put this into a deck so breaches is a three three goblin pirate for three and a red with menace that says whenever one or more pirates you control deals damage to one of your opponents exile the top card of each of those opponents libraries you may play those cards this turn you may spend mana as though or mana of any color to cast those spells it has partner works really well with malcolm so that you know that that's pretty cool I wanted to put together Malcolm and Breaches, but I didn't specifically because this does say XL the top cards of those opponents' libraries and you may play them. It's really, it is really difficult. And I find that it slows down games significantly. And I find myself trying to think maybe, maybe a little too hard when I can't physically see them, you know, like four feet from my, three feet from my face. For sure. I mean, we were just playing a game the other day and I resolved an insurrection and that would, that hurt my head the math that had to be done there. So, um, yeah, and that was on spell table. Yes. Yeah. And it was on spell table. So it's like if, if, if an effect only happens once or twice or something in order to, uh, steal a creature from an opponent or steal something from their library once or twice might be manageable, but with breaches, you're hoping to do this like five times per turn. So that's really where the root problem comes in. But five times per turn in person, that's easy. That's easy. So oh. Breaches is is a card that I would like to add to one of my decks. Yeah. Uh, there is a uh, legendary black Aetherborn rogue creature that I used to have a deck build for back in the day. Uh, it's really, really difficult uh, over webcam magic, and that's Gonti, Lord of Luxury. Uh, so Gonti's a four mana, two black, black, two, three with death touch. It says when Gonti enters the battlefield, look at the top four cards of target opponent's library, exile one of them face down, put the rest in the bottom of that library in a random order. You may look at and cast that card for as long as it remains exiled and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any type to cast that spell. Now, uh, I know it sounds like I'm contradicting myself from the last statement. This is only like a one-time trigger. It's only one card. It's not that big a deal couple things wrong with that statement one if you're playing a ganti deck you're probably reanimating him five times per turn and doing it five times per turn but the biggest problem with this one over webcam magic is the card is face down and no one else is supposed to know what it is but you and yeah. in webcam it's like okay everyone close their eyes and then show me the card and hopefully it's in the center of the camera view and good enough quality where i can actually read it and write it down yeah but, yeah you're like you're playing heads up seven up and it's like all right everybody look away from the screen yeah. and coil gets the look right now <laughs> exactly so so ganti was never really an option uh, for webcam magic but i've i've been looking to to put back together a mono black reanimator deck and this would be a breath of fresh air to go back and play paper magic with again with a ganti so i'm looking forward to playing with that again again yeah um how about a card that i did have in a deck i took it out I'm, i might put it back in this is emrakul the promised end so this is our emrakul that came from eldritch moon that says when it enters the or when you cast it you gain control of target opponent during that player's next turn after that turn that player takes an extra turn so this is um mind slaver on a creature um I did play this on on um, webcam once, and I did get Emrakul locked, where they just uh, were able to play it and bounce it and play it and bounce it. And honestly, it was pretty satisfying because I hadn't lost to an Emrakul the Promise End deck in, at minimum, a year and a half. <laughs> um, but it is quite it is quite the the um, endeavor, and and I think if I remember correctly, it was like just 
just show everybody what's in your hand because this is just so much easier for us all just to see. And I, I'm sorry, like if everybody sees your hand, but I knew I wasn't getting another turn. So I don't think it even mattered. <laughs> right. <laughs> it was like, all right, here's the four cards in my hand. And all right, I'll, I'll play these two and I'll do nothing with that. And I'll tap all your mana and then I'll swing at you or I'll swing your stuff into my Emrakul. And um, it's very difficult to just do over webcam. I would like to start playing with this card a little bit more again. Um, it does fit into um, pr pretty much any decks. It's 13 generic mana. I mean, um, it, it probably, it's probably only nine when you cast it, right? Yeah, it does cost one less for each card type among cards in your graveyard. Um, but yeah, no. So I'm, I'm a cool the promise end. I, I'm, I might bring it back. Yeah, that'll be that'll be fun. Maybe I'll bring back Mind Slaver then too, or something. <laughs> cool. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so how about how about a card that uh, this is a card that I always thought was kind of oppressive, uh, but I never got to play with it, and I have a perfect deck for it now. So I really really want to try it out, and that's Will Breaker. Uh, Will Breaker is a five mana two three, so three blue blue for a human wizard that says whenever a creature an opponent controls becomes the target of a spell or ability you control, gain control of that creature for as long as you control Will Breaker. Um, so Andy had mentioned that one of his commanders that he played in his draft was uh, Livio, and mm -hmm. uh, Livio is in one of my decks, my Jeskai Blink deck. Uh, Livio itself has an ability that says you can pay one in a white and you target a permanent, and then the owner of that permanent may choose whether or not to exile it with an Aegis counter on it. So you can target your opponent's creatures with this, and then they can either choose to have uh, Will Breaker steal it, or they can choose to have their creature get exiled with an Aegis counter on it until Livio activates his second ability. So I really want to take advantage of this and actually try to make people think about whether or not they want me to have their creature or they want their creature to go away until I say it comes back. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to the political aspect of a will breaker. Do you now the question is, do you ever actually have an intention of activating Livio to bring those back? It depends if I have anything good in exile at the same time, because it does bring back everything with an Aegis counter. You don't get to pick and choose, unfortunately. Oh, that's true. That's true. All right, the next card I have is Villainous Wealth. Everybody's favorite Sultai X spell, I think, unless you're counting Zexara, and then in that case, you know, there's... Well, Zexara is not X, but there's lots of X spells in Zexara, I guess. Yeah. But Villainous Wealth is a sorcery for X, Black, green, and blue. That says target opponent exiles the top X cards of their library. You may cast any number of those spells with converted mana cost X or less from among them without paying their mana costs. So um, that's really difficult to resolve when you do X equals 20 against somebody on spell table. Yeah. I'd say, I think the only time I've seen someone do this on spell table, they like duplicated the spell twice and it was for x equals 100 and it just <laughs> milled everybody out and it's like if, oh, if you do fair. that that's cool um if you're looking to specifically cast my entire deck over spell table good luck it's not going to be easy yeah i i think i think we've seen this card maybe once on our stream um i know i know it happened and there were plenty of cards that that were cast um drawn through infinite token um infinite tokens on the other on the other player's board but um there aren't a ton of creature I, and i don't even remember what the deck was it might have been like yarak um i know this is very popular in tassigur the golden fang um but those are decks that i haven't been playing too much because i don't want to mess with other people's decks mm -hmm. um it, i i just haven't played it but i would like to bring this this card back uh in into the fold um and and put together a salt High commander again okay. i have not had one in a long time do you, do you have anything in mind other than Muldrotha? Don't build Muldrotha. Don't be that person. Well, I do. Well, to be honest, the one that I'd want to build would be would be Tassigur the Golden Fang. Okay. Um, but I know Archaeolos is really popular. Um, and I've got an etched foil Archaeolos. I just don't use it. Um, so so maybe Archaeolos. There you go. That sounds like fun. Or or maybe I could put back together, you know, um, uh, Kadena. You know, who knows? You don't, now, now you we've don't, got, we've you got... don't have to do that. You don't have to do that. <laughs> okay. Thank you. 
Um, okay, so the the next uh, gr- kind of a group of cards that I wanted to talk about is a deck that I actually do successfully play over webcam, but it is difficult and it took a lot of practice. And that is my Curses and Auras deck. So I have a, a Kaidel, um, Prophet of Crufix, and Arden, uh, Intrepid Archaeologist, Partners, Curses deck. And um, as you can imagine, it's a little bit difficult to, you know, put my goad enchantments and auras and my vows on other people's creatures and keeping track of it. Um, so these types of curses and auras decks and giveaway decks like Zedru and we have a brand new one, Blim Comedic Genius. Um, so Blim Comedic Genius, the four mana, four, three, two, black and a red for an imp with flying. It says whenever Blim Comedic Genius deals combat damage to a player, that player gains control of target permanent you control when each player loses life. Or sorry, then each player loses life and discards cards equal to the number of permanents they control but don't own. I have not seen a single Blim deck yet, and I think it's webcam uh, commander that is is holding it back on top of it being maybe not a very popular color combination. Um, but this particular deck, because of its unpopularity, uh, I think is going to be one of my next decks that I build. Uh, and it just so happens to be in the two colors that my current Curses deck is not in. So there's no, uh, no crossover or anything. I don't have to borrow any cards from deck to deck. But yeah, I'm excited to see more of the, the Zedru cards uh, or Zedru decks with the new cards that we have in commander legends um that synergize well with blim as well yeah how about a card that's been printed six times since 2018 can what, you believe that six what, times what, since 2018 which card atali primal storm <laughs> has been printed oh yeah yeah i've got like six six, six different promos of that card so yeah no i believe that one <laughs> it was in rivals of ixalan resale promos commander 20 uh, Jumpstart, Time Spell Remastered, Commander 21. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. I actually really like this card still, though. I mean, it's actually a very good card. A 6 6 for 6, Elder Dinosaur, that says whenever Atali Primal Storm attacks, exile the top card of each player's library. You may cast any number of non land cards exiled this way without paying their mana costs. It's, it's a mouthful that just gives you lots of free value in red that needs it. Um, I We see this at Mono Red October when we play at our LGS, which is all just Mono Red decks um, on, on Commander Night. Uh, this deck is solid, and I haven't been playing this in my Commander decks. Yeah, it's it's very good, like we said in the mono red um, commander pods. But I I think it's even better in you know when you get to play when you get to exile someone's serum visions or something and cast for free. Sure, it's only a one mana spell, but you can't cast serum visions in a mono red deck, so it ends up being real real good for you. So yeah, I'm surprised uh, to not see more of this. But again, yeah, webcam magic. So um, I know Judge Anthony is going to be bringing his Atali deck probably back in October. We're going to have to face it again. And I'm looking forward to it. Honestly, I used to, I I used to dread it. I would like now that we have all these new cards from Commander Legends, I would like to swing an Atali Primal Storm and flip somebody else's reshape the earth and get 10 of my own lands. (laughs) I want Uh, the most value from my Atalis. That's that would be pretty darn sweet. It'd be pretty sweet. Pretty sweet. <laughs> All right. So um, speaking of of newer cards, uh, there was uh, a Commander Legends card and actually a Strixhaven card that were printed that are pretty difficult to resolve over webcam, especially if you do it multiple times. Um, that hope you probably will be seeing more play when you are going to Paper Magic. And that is Root Weaver Druid from Commander Legends, two and a green, two, one elf druid. It says when Root Weaver Druid enters the battlefield, each opponent may search their library for up to three basic land cards. They each put one of those cards onto the battlefield tapped under your control and the rest onto the battlefield tapped under their control. And then each player who searched their library this way shuffles it. Um, and Verdant Mastery is one of those Strixhaven sorceries that has an alternate casting cost, and the alternate casting cost is a lower cost that gives an opponent an advantage. And it's specifically this alternate casting cost um, of four mana, so for three and a green. Uh, you search your library for up to four basic land cards and reveal them, put one of them into the battlefield tapped under a, an opponent's control. Um, so having your lands come under your opponent's control um, sure, with tokens, you can do it, but you have to make sure that you actually exile the card from your 
particular deck then. And then if you worry about homeward path and stuff going on, there's a lot of interactions when it comes to more than just stealing people's creatures. When you start stealing lands um, that are less interactable, you know, destroy and just simply get it back in your graveyard um, that are going to hopefully be more prevalent. I mean, I like these cards and I, I hope they see more play coming up here in the future in paper magic. Exactly. Hey, um, <clears throat> do you want to welcome back Agent of Treachery? Uh, no, I would like to not welcome back Agent of Treachery. <laughs> I would like Agent of Treachery to go die in a hole. <laughs> F you, Agent of Treachery. I, I had to deal with you when I had to switch over from playing Paper Commander every single week to playing Arena. And Winota was bringing out every copy Agent of Treachery known to man. Oh, yeah. no, I took Agent of Treachery out of my Yarrick deck at that moment. I'm like, no way. No way am I doing this to other people anymore. This is terrible. One, one is it? it's difficult over webcam. Two, you feel bad. Feel So Agent bad. of Treachery, a 2-3 human rogue, 5 blue blue that says... When Agent of Treachery enters the battlefield, gain control of target permanent. And then at the beginning of your end step, if you control three or more permanents you don't own, draw three cards. Now it's good. Way easier to do in paper. Still hate you in paper. Hate you. So welcome back, but also... Hate you. You can, you can stay gone. Yeah. Stay gone forever, Agent of Treachery. Now, Treachery, <laughs> the enchantment is too cool not to play, even though it's basically the same thing with double upside on a Yark deck. Uh, five mana enchantment, you get to untap five lands when you cast it. But, you know, um, Agent of Treachery is really the problem. Yeah, get out of here. Get <laughs> out of here, Agent. Um, so there was one deck that I, I mentioned a few times before that I had built uh, at the beginning of, the, of last year, uh, right before the pandemic started, and I was very, very excited for it because, as you know, I like playing reanimator decks, and they printed this brand new legendary creature in Theros Beyond Death called Atris Oracle of Half-Truths. Uh, so this is two, a blue, and a black. You get a 3-2 human advisor with Menace that says when Atris Oracle of Half-Truths enters the battlefield, target opponent looks at the top three cards of your library and separates them into a face-down pile and a face-up pile. Put one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. So just by that explanation, you should should be able to understand why this is real hard to do over webcam magic. Um, obviously, as the Atris player, I could close my eyes and let all three of the other players make the decisions about what's face up and what's face down. But technically, that is not what's happening with the trigger. So I'm looking forward to also rebuilding this Demir Reanimator deck. That was done. It was built. It was sleeved. I was ready. Uh, and I was never able to play it. So I'm looking forward to put it back together again. Yeah, another deck that you were playing for a little while in the Esper variety is Send Triplets. So a 3-3 legendary artifact creature human wizard. That's a really long that's a really long type line. Yeah. Uh for a two, a white, a blue, and a black that says at the beginning of your upkeep, choose target opponent. This turn that player can't cast spells or activate abilities and play lands with their hand revealed. Um, or and plays with their hand revealed. You may play lands and cast spells from that player's hand this turn. So you got to play this a few times. I got to remove remove it a few times. Yeah, I, it's just at the time that I had a just a generic Esper artifacts deck, and I just kept like switching out who the commander was. And um, believe it or not, uh, there is an Esper commander that draws more hate than Aloro Ageless Ascetic, and that is Send Triplets, because people don't <laughs> want you to steal everything out of their hand for some reason. You know, you can't remove Aloro if you never cast Aloro. That's Aloro. very true. It's very true. <laughs> I think I had I think I've had a Send Triplets at my C and upkeep maybe a total of two or three times. Having, I think you're right. Having having played the deck probably like 10 times. Would you say that I played your send triplets against it every time you played it? I feel like I probably played against it that many times. Um, it, 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 I probably played it at uh, our LGS uh, oh, once or so? twice. Yeah, probably okay. once or twice um, just in, in games where it's like, hey, I'm playing send triplets. Make sure you, you have some sort of removal in your deck uh, because, you know, that's only fair for me to say that before I sit down with this deck. And you were playing, what's funny is you were playing a very fair send triplets deck. It wasn't anything crazy. You were just like, this is generic generic artifacts i mean you had you finally added some, some more stuff when you're like all right let's boost this up a little okay let's boost this up a little bit more yeah um i don't think it was ever oppressive but the just seeing send triplets get ready to kind of take 
my my reveal my hand and potentially take my spells was enough for me to be like all right i guess i will literally always remove it for sure and 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 actually this deck got uh, a lot better since since i played it cuz now you have cards like sphinx of the second sun that's going to give you another upkeep after your combat step and then Ooh. you're going to be able to target someone else so there's a, there was a lot of upkeep stuff i know um dan kraus uh, has uh, an upkeep deck i think it's in salt eye or maybe Co- it's in- wasn't it coma coma oh yeah it is keeps right because yep. you kept getting Simic. extra of those coma coils that's right that's right so there was um but you know i i would take a peek maybe uh into his deck list and see how many more upkeep trigger stuff happened uh and see what send triplets can get upgraded with because send triplets could be a very fun deck uh to bring back into paper magic right um so uh I'm, let's just stick let's just stick with demir i mean i love it so uh, maybe some just stick with Reanimator too. Um, so in Ikoria, there is a companion uh, named Gyruda, Doom of Deaths, who is a six six demon kraken for four hybrid blue black hybrid blue black. Um, that says when Gyruda enters the battlefield, each player puts the top four cards of the library into their graveyard. Put a creature card with an even converted mana cost from among those cards onto the battlefield under your control. Uh, so this is again. Um, something that's a lot easier to do in paper just because of how you can visualize it. I mean, you can just mill the four cards and put them right out in front of everyone so you can see exactly what's happening in people's graveyards. When you're playing graveyard-centric decks that don't just focus on your graveyard but also focus on your opponent's graveyards, obviously it's going to be way easier to do in person. Uh, I know we have seen Garuda um, done in webcam. It's usually in times where maybe you're only resolving the Garuda once or twice in a game. But if Garuda is your uh, commander and you're playing around getting as many Garuda triggers as possible, uh, you're going to want to try to play in paper. Right. All right. Let's pick one more each. One more each. Um, I'm going to go with the deck that I took apart a really long time ago. Uh, so I know we talked about this deck briefly when we did our uh, Gone for, gone But Not Forgotten series. Um, and this is Zedru the Great Hearted. So Zedru is a 2-4 Minotaur Monk for one, a red, a white, and a blue that says at the beginning of your upkeep, you gain X life and draw X cards, where X is the number of permanents you own that your opponents control. And then you can pay a red, a white, and a blue, so Jeskai, and target opponent gains control of target permanent you you control. So um, you're looking to give away problematic cards that perhaps stop your opponents from casting more than one spell a turn, or make it so that they can't draw cards, or make it so that when a permanent leaves, they lose. Um, that Maybe that's just how I played it. That's how I played it. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone else was just giving out good stuff. Like, here, have a Blightsteel Colossus. <laughs> <laughs> so this is very difficult to play on webcam. It's very difficult to manage when you're not sitting next to somebody. You can just hand them your card. Like, I'm going to give this to you, Coil. I'm going to give this to you, Nick. Yeah. I'm going to give it to you, you know, whoever. And um, so I, I, and this, this deck has gotten a lot of, of goodies um, in the last couple of years. And I have not uh, had this deck together, I would say for at least three years now. And this got lots of things from, um, I mean, just even from the Ravnica block, right? I mean, you can you can make enough treasures now um, with Smothering Tithe to have mana to give things away. Uh, you, Nine Lives came out in, in Core 21, which says when it leaves the battlefield, you lose the game. You can give that away to someone. Um, you know, our uh, Archaeomancer's map and monologue text came out. There's just, there's so many things that, uh, like new goodies that I never played with with this deck. Um, I never even I don't even think I played this deck when Approach of the Second Sun was out. No. I think you this didn't. was taken apart even when Amonkhet Block was out. I mean, this might have been gone for four years, five years now. Yeah. No, this was this was I mean, Zedru was your deck when I started or was one of your decks at least when I started playing Commander, and that was when Amonkhet had just come out, but it didn't last very long because originally your Zedru deck didn't have win conditions. Yeah, the longest game of magic we've ever played to date was against my Zedru deck that f- couldn't end the game. Yeah. It, yeah. it was, I was gaining life drawing cards, but everybody's turns were taking so long that the sun was starting to come up <laughs> and you and our friend were still at our house. And I was like, I'm so sorry. And you're like, we're, we, we were all like, we're finishing this game. We've come this far. <laughs> and I don't even think I won. I think you won in the end, right? I no. think you won with like a, no, no, I, I died first. Um, 
which is why I was I was giving the uh, the offer to our friend. It's like I'm dead. If you want a scoop, we can leave. And they said no. They wanted to see it till the end. I am not okay. sure who won the game, though. To be fair, I, I just know I know we I did not. <laughs> I know I did not. Um, but yeah, okay. So my last card uh, for for in person paper magic is one that I've really only seen people try to play this in webcam in a CEDH version uh, where maybe they are more capable uh, of doing that with their tokens. And that's Turgrid, God of Fright. So Turgrid is a five mana, four, five uh, gods, a three black, black with menace that says whenever an opponent sacrifices a non-token permanent or discards a permanent card, you may put that card from a graveyard onto the battlefield under your control. Um, Turgid also has another side where it's Turgid's Lantern. It's a four mana, three and a black. As tap it, target player loses three life unless they sacrifice a non-land permanent or discard a card. Three and a black to untap Turgid's Lantern. But that's not really the part that's uh, challenging to do over webcam. It is the you know taking control of people's permanents after they get sacrificed or discarded. Uh, again, normally if it's a, only a one or two Z type of deal, tokens work well. But uh, in a in a Turgrid deck, maybe like a mid range Turgrid deck where you are playing Edict effects like Grave Pact and Dictate of Erebos, where you are making people sacrifice their entire boards or discard all the cards in their hand, um, then you know that's going to be yep. nearly impossible. No one, no one really, no one unless in, unless you are Infinite Tokens themselves has that many <laughs> Infinite Tokens to resolve that. Exactly. Very good deck. Very hard to play on webcam. Yeah, I don't know if I actually want to play against this in person because it does seem uh, strong and I don't want other people to have my stuff. But I will definitely watch over someone's shoulder as they're playing this in person. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Well, um, as you all make your transition back to paper uh, or um, paperback. Paperback paper. in person. Yeah. Paperback? Yeah, as you paperback go back in person? As you bring go paperback? As you go paperback in person? I like that. Paper I I just thought of it. I don't, <laughs> it was pretty good, right? I mean, it's it great. Uh, there's something there. It's there, right? Paperback? It's, it's, I mean, there. it's there. We'll yeah. ch- we'll chew on it. And we'll come back to it. <laughs> <laughs> but um uh, you all stay safe as you make your transition back to playing Paper Magic. We hope you all enjoy your upcoming pre-releases. If you are going to be playing those in paper, um I believe we are going to try to do ours in paper. It'll be the first time that we see a bunch of people at our LGS. Um and I'm very excited. And we all um I guess we want to thank you all for listening. So, uh, if you want to contact us, you can find our podcast online at theguardianprojectpodcast.com. You can find our social media on Twitter at guardianpod and our gameplay videos at youtube.com slash theguardianproject. And if you want to email us, uh, you can email us at guardianprojectpod at gmail.com. I'm on Twitter at ATFlory. And I'm on Twitter at Worm Coil Engine. And of course, we want to give a special thanks to our producer and editor, Ryan Nichols. Thank you so much. And another special thanks to the one who handles all of our graphic design, Chris Wolf. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate you. And we'll chat with you all next week. Bye, everyone.